Okay, the last example you'll notice has a radical on both sides, which would make it more difficult if there was more to this problem. If you have a radical equals a radical, and let's say there's plus 7 or something like that, now it's a hard problem. Okay, if it's just radical equals radical, you have two exact terms, both of them being radicals. This is the structure you want. Radical on one side equals radical on the other side. If you have that exact structure, all you have to do is square both sides. So if I square this side and square this side, the square root squared just gets me what's underneath. The square root squared just gets me what's underneath. So 2x minus 3 is equal to x plus 2. What's left to do is to solve for x. If I move the x to the left, I'm going to get minus x. Move the 3 to the right, it becomes plus 3. 2x minus x makes x. 2 plus 3 makes 5. x equals 5 is the solution. Only if it works. Now, with the radical situation here, the one extra added feature for this is you can't take the square root of a negative number. So if this x creates negative numbers, we have to throw it out. All right? But otherwise, if it works, it works. So if I put x back into this problem, 2 times x is going to be 2 times 5 minus 3 equals the square root of x plus 2, that becomes 5 plus 2. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 3 is 7. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 equals 7, which is true. So x equals 5 is an accurate answer to this problem. So that's our final answer for that problem. Again, if this came out, let's say negative 2 and negative 2 in the radical, so you get to this point. If you're checking your answer, you get to that point. You have to throw it out because we aren't allowed to do square roots of negative numbers. So that's outside the domain of the problem, so we'd have to throw out the answer for that reason. That's about the only reason a problem like that won't work. Square root equals square root, they, they tend to just work.